We did it! So yeah, for those of you who haven't watched the whole thing, the basic idea is that the Cold War kept going too long, it ended in nuclear hellfire, the whole world got glassed, and the only surviving populations that people were aware of lived in metro systems, because they were underground and protected from the radiation. The games start a couple, like, a decade or so after the bombs fell. You're Artyom, you are a member of a special group called the Order, which was led by Colonel Miller. The Order was meant to sort of keep peace in the Moscow underground because there's a bunch of internal ethnic and military tension after everything falls apart. And in this game, you find out that in reality, it is not only the Moscow underground that survived. There are parts of the world that are legitimately populated. The reason why the Moscow underground has been kept secret and kept like everyone in there thinks they're the only ones left is because there were people who were terrified that radio communication that escapes Moscow could alert the world that the people who kind of sort of did the Cold War are still alive. Uh, essentially, they were concerned that if the rest of the world was receiving radio signals from Moscow, they would continue the Cold War and exterminate what remained of the Russians. So they had radio jammers running in and out of all the lines into the metro. You find this out in the beginning of the game. You hijack a train and you decide that you just want to get away from it all and live a peaceful life with your beautiful, hot, tight pussied wife, Anna and your friends, but Colonel Miller dies here. Colonel Miller, however, was a well-decorated military officer and also lived to be like 55 or 60, and that's pretty good for like a highly irradiated Cold War vet in these circumstances. So, you know, got that. They're a bit strange, Bison. Is America still around? I think so, to an extent. It's a bit ambiguous. I've never read the books. I think the world is not as over as the game seems to imply that it is. I think Russia is especially irradiated. I don't know if there's an exact number, but I have a feeling there are still, like, cities functioning in parts of the world, you know? Nothing huge, like New York or whatever, but, like, probably in some parts of the world, there are, like, actual above-ground populations that are doing somewhat okay. Yeah, I think overall it's a pretty optimistic story because the world ends in, like, a very definitive way, and it's all about, like, it's all about, like, cradling the embers of life and civilization after the fact, you know? Like, even after the, the most end of the world, end of the world that there is, they, all, t all together, like, things still keep going, people are still, you know, forming families and doing their own shit, yeah. So I think that's nice. So, like, Fallout? Ooh, I don't think Fallout is really about that. I don't think Fallout is about how the world keeps going after the nukes. That does happen in Fallout. The world does keep going after the nukes. But I don't think that's what it's about. Like, thematically. I think this game is about that thematically. What happened to the spooky people from the first game? You kind of sort of killed them. Canonically, in the books at least, in the, um, the psychic alt-humans that you find, the dark ones, you kind of missile strike them because they're spooky. Very sad. They're not all dead. Look, no, they're not all dead. There are, there are dark one influences in this game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Th that helped. Why they exist? Just radiation magic. It's just standard, like, ooh, the radiation made some people psychic and spooky, you know? Fallout is about how the world will be shit in spite of humanity's but I mean, that's the whole point of War Never Changes, right? The whole point of Fallout is that humanity got the biggest lesson imaginable on how not to do things, and then they immediately went right back to doing all of those things, like, immediately like all the same things the next chance they got they started doing it all over again right back on their shit and this is this is about like trying to escape you know like like making it like you know things getting better i really like this game i i really like the fact that this game it the the, the emotional core of this game is having like a family a found family and just like escaping and that's the good ending you know just a little bit box syndicate mostly from the books the Witcher or Metro, which one's better? I think Witcher 3 is better than any of the Metro games. I haven't played Witcher 1 or 2, but I think the Metro Trilogy is really, really good. I also think the Metro Trilogy is roughly equal in quality across the across the board with the third Metro game, this one, maybe being my favorite, but only by a little bit. I like the three of them a lot. Yeah, it's again, it's a nice Hopium ending, you know? I, I like the fact that you can, there's like 25 minute segments of you just being on the train listening to your wife talk about shit and you can like pat her head. That's just really cute. How many games let you, how many games are like first person shooters in a grim post apocalyptic setting where you already have a wife, you two are unambiguously in love with each other. And you can just, like, hang out with her and just, like, chill. And it's it's not even, like, a mechanic thing. It's just, like, you chill with her, you know? I feel like games need more of that. That's really cool. I don't even think they do it in a way that's meant to produce, like, waifu affection. Because none of Anna's mannerisms are meant to make her, like, an object of fixation for the player. 
they're meant to be an object of fixation, like, in Artyom's mind. Does that make any sense? Sorry, not object like an object, but like a subject of, like, like the thing that you... Th does that make any sense? There's a big difference to how Anna gets treated in this game, and how, like, a cute girl gets treated in, like, Persona 5 or something. Does that make any sense? Like, in those games, those characters are designed to make you, the player, fixate on and like them, but Anna feels like her own chick. She's with Artyom. She's got all her own shit going on, you know? Like, it's like a... It, you're not doing it because you like her. You're doing it because you know Artyom and Anna like each other, and that makes it more wholesome. Yeah, it's like an intimacy thing. Isn't that cute? You get what I'm talking about, right? Very cute. Also, you can see her tits in, um, in, uh, the second Metro game. And they're, uh, they're, 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 they're juicy. Holy shit. There are a lot of porn mods for Ana. You know what? Good for them. If, P if, if, if game modders are going to mod in porn and nudity, go for Ana. Yeah. Cool. Has a personality. An adult. Great. Go for it. Better than you fucks mostly get. The bar is so low. I don't, I don't care about people wanting to fuck cute girl. I don't. I don't even care about fan service, man. As as long as it's done well in a game, I don't care. In in there are tits in all three of these games. In the first game and in the third game, you see them on sex workers, and in the second game, you fuck Anna because she isn't your wife at the time, so you just meet her. Yeah, and Gorilla Dick in the third game, very true. I've never had an issue with fan service. The issue that I have is a uh, bad fan service. Oh, that's true, Tater Dragon. Yeah. Remember in that first game when you tried to fuck the prostitute and got robbed? Oh yeah, do you guys remember? Back in the first game there was currency, and there's a there's a prostitute you can fuck, and she robs you. That was funny. I didn't reload a save after that, did I? I just I just owned up to it. That's fair. Yeah, that's good. Hope she's doing okay. The prostitute who robbed me in the first Metro game? Yeah, me too. I almost brought that up when you said it was weird that prostitutes always found you cute as a player. Oh yeah, yeah. It's good. Yeah, some guy punches you, you get robbed, you know. Whatever. Isn't that type of, like, trap common in Latin America? Isn't that, like, a thing? Like, if you're if you're a gringo, and you go to a bar in, like, Colombia or Brazil or some shit, like, I've heard, because I've always seen the stories, you know, like, there will be a chick who flirts with you, and then the the bar, you know, you'll, you'll order drinks for you and her both, and the bar will rack up an insane Metro tab. has a really cool idea of bullets as currency. Yeah, it's cool. And then some bouncer will show up and they're like, yeah, you owe us like $6,000 for all the, all the drinks, you know? It's everywhere, even in Turkey and Paris, common tourist scams. Yeah, that's why as an American, as a gringo, you should never, ever, ever go to a bar unless you have a suicide vest on you. I don't know why we're watching this whole thing. It's just kind of serene, isn't it? I don't know, it's nice. You spend three games crawling your way through sewers and fighting through like irradiated blizzards. And now they arrive at a... Com and a, a non-irradiated area, and they just get to chill. What would happen if you refused to pay? I think they'd beat the shit out of you, but that's probably a case-by-case -case situation. They might just let you go. They might just try to intimidate you, though. Of course, you still have cancer. Yeah, well, you're probably... You're probably not gonna live very long. The nurse literally said, like, he'll have a little while longer as long as we have blood, you know? So I, I my, my guess is that you have enough time to impregnate Anna, and that's it. We did it, guys. That game took us like eight months to beat. Oh, wow. Hey, guys. The achievement for finishing the game in Ranger Hardcore mode is only 1.5%. That was pretty tough. You know what? That's fair.